Hello everyone and welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. General Hospital spoilers indicate that fans should always expect the unexpected in the realm of Port Charles. Laura Collins recently had a great visit with Nicholas Cassidine in prison, despite the terrible ending. Nicholas is having a difficult time, nonetheless, he was relieved to see his mother, and both were hoping that his transplant test would provide the results they needed to rescue Lulu Spencer. After all, Nicholas saved his litter sister's life with a bone marrow transplant many years ago, yet he was deemed unfit to donate. During their conversation, the topic of good behavior was brought up as a possible reason for an early release. Nicholas appeared depressed, still grieving the loss of Spencer Cassidine and disappointed that he was missing significant milestones that Ace Cassidine was achieving. Still, if Jack Brennan was able to get himself released from prison at the drop of a hat, might the GH writers do the same for Nicholas? After all, with Lucky back in the picture and Lulu expected to come soon, it appears that Laura's children will be able to rejoin in the little town and jump into storylines together. With that stated, Nicholas isn't a member of the WSB like Brennan, but he does have an uncle who is. Valentine Cassidine is now on the run alongside Charlotte Cassidine. Anna Devane is desperate to find them both, particularly given Lulu's illness and Mayor Collins' commands. Wouldn't it be intriguing if Valentine got Nicholas out of jail, possibly with the help of Brennan? Valentine will undoubtedly return to the PC picture at some point, and he will require a storyline that allows him to do so without repercussions. Nicholas has pledged to do better, which is why he is currently in prison, but may Valentine have a catch if he helps Nicholas get out? Something that would cause Nicholas to do bad things again? Perhaps he serves as a spy for Valentine, or his uncle requires something illicit in exchange for his release. According to General Hospital spoilers, Nicholas initially handed himself in because he wanted to be better to Ace than to Spencer. Even the finest intentions might get lost in pandemonium, and Nicholas may be desperate to leave prison. Especially if Lulu wakes up and there is a chance to spend time with her, his son, and his long-lost brother, Lucky. General Hospital spoilers for Wednesday, August 28th reveal that some huge events are going to occur in Port Charles. Laura Collins appears to be about to make a big decision, and from the sounds of it, she'll be turning to the WSB for a favor. As reported on Tuesday, August 27th, Nicholas Cassidine is not a liver transplant match for Lulu Spencer, thus Laura must find Lucky Spencer. Will the WSB help? Will Jack Brennan be able to help her? It looks like he will. Anna Devane will have a scene with Brennan on Wednesday's program, and it appears like it will be hot. During the August 28th GH Daily Peak, the super spy will try to help Laura by approaching Brennan in his office. In one moment, the chief of the WSB's Port Charles division asks Anna, Do you want to badger me, or do you want to save Lulu? It may take some convincing, but Brennan will provide the assistance. As scenes flash through the film, Tracy Quartermain tells someone in a distressed voice that she wants to assist Lulu. Will Tracy be examined to determine if she is a suitable liver donor? Could she be? Fans will need to tune in to find out. Speaking of Lucky, the GH Daily Preview for Wednesday, August 28th features him and Isaiah in the prison cell, but it appears that they are going to blow up the popsicle stand. Lucky tells his pal, wait for my signal, and then we will move. Where will they go? Across town, GH spoilers for Wednesday, August 28th suggest Ava Jerome will be taken off unprepared. The Daily Peak shows her grasping John Jagger Kate's bag and asking, Who are you? What type of hidden riches and insights into the unscrupulous FBI agent will she uncover when she digs in? Meanwhile, Sonny Corintho's suspicions will be proven on Wednesday's broadcast. GH's daily promo video depicts him and John having lunch at Bobby's when the FBI agent remarks, You are going to make all of your daughter's troubles go away. John is undoubtedly using Christina Corinthos Davis and her arrest against the mob leader, but this is a mental game that the FBI agent may lose. Finally, Christina will reach out to Jason Morgan. Will she rely on him for assistance during this tough time, or will she go over her father's head in the hopes that Sonny's right-hand man will kill Ava for her? According to General Hospital spoilers, Wednesday's episode will be plenty of drama and upheaval, so viewers should be sure to tune in to avoid missing a moment. 
as astonished as we were to read that Kelly Monaco had supposedly been let go from General Hospital and Sam would be killed off, we were not surprised by the outrage it sparked among fans. Their rallying to rescue the character's life and a petition to keep her portrayer is gaining traction. Unfortunately, there is no assurance that it will work. And if it doesn't, we'll have to say goodbye to Sam. However, that does not mean we have to say goodbye to Monaco. It's not the first time the actress has been let go from a soap opera. Her stint as Port Charles's Livy ended with the show's cancellation in 2003. Monaco was apparently given her choice of series to join, with All My Children and General Hospital vying for her attention. The actress was a tremendous admirer of General Hospital, so she jumped at the chance to join Port Charles's sister drama. That's why we wouldn't be surprised if she was not only cast in another daytime drama, but also had other offers for her services. And we, of course, have some suggestions for who she could portray. First and foremost, there is always the young and restless route. Why not re-energize the Brooks and Foster families by introducing Snapper and Chris' daughter, Jennifer? She may return to Genoa City with Aunt Jill, determined to establish a name for herself at Jabot like her mother did in the past. It could allow us to see Chris for the first time in decades, or any number of other Brooks family members could pay her a visit. There'd be plenty of eligible bachelors to select from. Adam, Nick, and Billy, yes, they are of a sort, but Jill was adopted, so it isn't that weird. Although it is a borderline incestuous relationship, it appears more likely to occur on a show like The Bold and the Beautiful. Speaking of that, how about a completely new character who is unrelated to any of the families in Los Angeles? We already have enough people who are related to one another, continually bouncing from bed to bed and triangle to triangle, perhaps we could bring in a new family. In addition, Monaco may be running a new fashion house. We've been waiting for a fashion rivalry for ages, and Bold and Beautiful could bring her in to oversee Bill's new venture while simultaneously sparking a highly unprofessional but unavoidable relationship with her boss-slash-business partner. And, to make things even more fascinating, she might get along with Liam, sparking a father-son rivalry that will light up our screens. Days of Our Lives is no stranger to General Hospital crossovers. The most obvious connection would be between Monaco's character and Steve Burton's Harris, who left Salem earlier this year. She could be an ex who has come to town hunting for him. Anna storms into Brennan's office, and he asks what he can do to help her. She urges him to quit playing games and let her know where Valentine is. He informs her again that they have no idea where he is right now. She informs him that this is not about Valentine, but his daughter Charlotte. Brennan assumes it's about protecting Lulu. Brennan receives a call, accepts it, and asks the person to provide him the information. Following the call, Anna explains that if he knows Lulu is dying, Charlotte can save her life. Brennan tells her that the phone call he just received was about saving Lulu. Back at Laura's, Brennan calls and she puts him on speakerphone. Tracy and Kevin are still with her. Brennan claims they have a location on Lucky, which is where he was a week ago. Laura inquires as to how she might send him a message. Brennan adds that communication in that area is weak, and their only hope is to send someone to Lucky and deliver a message. He claims that this is a hazardous part of the world, so this person must be prepared for the hazards. After they hang up the phone, Tracy offers to pay for mercenaries, but Laura says she'll go alone. She has a contact at the agency Lucky was working for. Tracy believes that other people are better qualified to handle this, and she asks Kevin whether he agrees. Kevin knows better than to try to persuade Laura out of it, so he's joining her. Laura expected this and asks Tracy to watch for Ace while she is abroad. Tracy is stunned and believes he would be better off with family members like Liz, whose son is Ace's cousin. Laura thought he'd be better off with the Quartermains, who have multiple nannies. Tracy agrees to let Ace stay at Monica's home. Tracy tells Kevin, let's go find Lucky. Anna still wants Brennan to find Valentine, but he insists he has no idea where he is. Anna doesn't trust him, and if his plan to find Lucky fails, he'll have to confront the fact that he sacrificed an innocent woman's life to protect Valentine. Alexis visits Portia at the hospital. They talk about Christina, and Alexis believes Portia heard about the events at the burial. Portia knows Molly and Christina are in anguish, but so is Alexis. 
She aches for Alexis, who is torn between her two daughters. A security at the African compound urges Isaiah and Lucky to gather their belongings since they will be leaving in five minutes. Lucky asks Isaiah if it worked, and he says yes, he played it just as Lucky instructed, and they're leaving. Isaiah claims he told the boss, Sidwell, who is complaining about stomach symptoms, that he need a full battery of testing with equipment he does not have. Sidwell has sent him to get it, which is their chance to flee. The guard returns and tells Isaiah it's time to leave, but stops Lucky from accompanying him, saying he must stay here. Isaiah claims he needs Lucky's protection because they have to transfer pricey equipment through dangerous areas. The guard is hailed over his radio and must depart, but instructs the doctor to be ready to go when he returns. Isaiah inquires as to their current activities. Lucky hands him his rifle and tells him to go to his contact, who will get him out of Africa. Isaiah would not abandon him, but Lucky insists that he must leave not just to rescue himself, but also to save him. He instructs Isaiah to contact the WSB to assist him, they owe him a favor. Dante finds Tracy sitting in the chapel and asks if he can join her. Tracy wonders what she owes this visit to. He just wanted to spend some time with her and thank her for being here for Lulu. He knows she has always held a special place in Lulu's heart, and she has often stood up for her. He gives Tracy credit for who she has become. Tracy yells, she became a person I don't recognize. Dante claims Lulu is the same person she was before she lapsed into a coma. Tracy asks what he recalls of Lulu before the disaster, when they first met. He admits she could be trouble, and she took chances and kicked ass. Tracy claims she suddenly became cautious and hesitant. She screams because Lulu had spirit and determination, which he took away from her. Dante claims that he had PTSD and was unwell. Tracy claims he got treatment, which was beneficial, but he also slept with her cousin and turned down Lulu's aid and love. Tracy claims he destroyed Lulu's self-esteem, and if she dies without rediscovering the spark she once had, she would never forgive him. Dante can live without her forgiveness and claims she can keep it for herself. Dante brings up Luke and how, before his death, he most likely remembered all of Tracy's pledges to take after Lulu as his life flashed before his eyes. Tracy pledged to get Lulu the best therapy she could. Unfortunately, Lulu has nothing to show for it. Dante and Tracy calm down. Dante admits she is correct. Lulu warned him about leaving, but he was more concerned about what might happen if he stayed. He knows walking away was wrong, and she is fading away, with nothing he can do to stop it. Tracy sticks by her words, although she should use better timing, as bashing him up now achieves nothing. Dante understands that she has little need for him, but she is vital to Lulu, and hence to him. He knows she helped Lulu through many difficult times, and Lulu needs her now more than ever. Tracy exclaims, she needs both of us. Dex goes to the Metro Court. He sits in the alcove, looks at his phone, and appears undecided about calling his mother. Later, Joss arrives to surprise him. He wasn't certain he'd see her tonight. Joss explains that it was too late to see Lulu and nothing could be done, so her mother told her to go enjoy her life. He understands how difficult it is to let go of worry. Joss believes there is a chance Lulu will be fine, but things may go wrong. He says they have to pray that everything goes right. Nicholas is released from Flatland Prison to visit his mother. They're both in tears. They sat down, and he inquires about Ace. Laura sends him images and updates on how he is doing. Given the timing of this unexpected visit, he suspects something is wrong. Laura claims they have a problem with Lulu and she needs him. Nicholas has blood drawn, and they await the findings, which should arrive within an hour. Nicholas recalls the first time he saw Lulu, when she was unwell. He still has a mark on his back from bone marrow extraction. She recalls how he stood beside Lulu, a terrified toddler. Nicholas reflects on how he pledged to be there for his boys in the same way, yet failed them. He worries if he'll ever get the opportunity to atone. Laura insists he'll get that chance now. She promises he'll serve his sentence, save his sister, and return home to them. Laura is surprised when the lab technician returns with the results of the test. Nicholas can't assist Lulu. 
His liver functionality does not fulfill Lulu's requirements. Nicholas does not comprehend, he is healthy and does not drink. She claims his liver is fine for him, but not for Lulu. Nicholas says it will be fine. He reminds her that Lulu has other relatives, and he instructs his mother to find and bring Lucky home. Laura and Liz are sitting in Portia's office together. Portia and another doctor diagnose Lulu with medical cirrhosis of the liver. Her liver failure was most likely caused by the drug she had been taking for the past four years. Laura believes they can adjust the meds, but the physicians say it is not that simple. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.